really, really sorry about the way that the news were communicated to you. Este viaje porque Henry lleva aquí más de un mes, pues no aquí. Yo soy local. Pero sí en en Asia, fue a Japón, fue yo no sé dónde me ordi. Yo soy local. Pero sí en en Asia, fue a Japón, fue yo no sé dónde me ordi. Me pues no aquí. Yo soy local. Pero sí en en Asia, fue a Japón, fue yo no sé. I don't think there was ever going to be the perfect time for me to make this video. I definitely did not feel ready to talk about this or share it. And I was not planning on hiding this from you. I was planning on telling you, but on my terms, on my time. On your terms and time, what do you mean? In a couple of years, after you make a few million more dollars off of your vegan dog shit, Raw Vana is a very popular vegan YouTuber and Instagram who got caught eating fish. There were two pieces of delicious, fatty, high vitamin B12 pieces of fish on her plate <laughs> and decided to play this sympathy card, instantly making a sob story video. But who knows how long she was eating fish for and deceiving her viewers. With a carnivore diet or even any diet including animal foods, you are obtaining all vitamins and minerals necessary for human body function. There aren't any vitamins that you're not consuming on that diet that you would be obtaining by cheating on your diet. As a vegan, if you're consuming animal foods and portraying a vegan lifestyle and way of eating, you are literally ruining people's health. Especially considering Ravana was encouraging people to follow a raw vegan diet that caused her considerable health problems. Vegans are so invested in their lifestyle and afraid of backlash from the vegan community that the incentive to maintain the illusion that a plant-based lifestyle is absolutely insane. What's ridiculous is that all of these vegans still insist that the vegan lifestyle is amazing for you. Some sort of mystical, magical experience. And good for you, despite it ruining their health to the point they needed to consume animal products. Let's see what else she has to say. But before I start that, I just want to say how much I stand for the plant-based diet and for veganism. I believe it because I felt it, I've experienced it. Six years ago, I adopted a raw vegan diet. I learned about this magnificent way of eating plants. Let food be thy medicine and your medicine be your food. All of these things I learned six years ago and they completely changed my life. Because of the this plant-based diet and of veganism, I was able to overcome addiction like alcoholism and smoking cigarettes. I was able to gain a greater consciousness of who I am and my place in this world and the foods that I need in order to thrive and everything. It's just, it elevated my consciousness and body, mind and spirit. This is so crazy. Literally being caught cheating on a vegan diet because it ruined her health and she's still talking glamorously about it. What is thriving on a plant-based diet? It's a sugar high from incredibly high fructose and glucose consumption through fruit. It also is the initial removal of potentially inflammatory foods, refined foods that plague modern diets. I was eating at the time a low fat raw vegan diet, but one thing that did happen after my water fast was that I lost my period. By this time, talking to other people who were in the movement, they're like, no, it's it's normal, it's okay, you're still ovulating, you're just not bleeding. I even thought that it was a good thing at one point. So that went on for two years. I didn't have my period for two years. She doesn't have her period for two years, yet she's still sharing the benefits of raw fruits and veggies on her Instagram during this time. What a... I, I cannot, I can't... Until the end of 2015 was when I started looking more into it and talking to more people and reading about it and I learned that not having a period is is really not healthy. It's not good for you. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go and get checked and see what's going on. So I went to some doctors. They're naturopathic doctors here in San Diego. Uh-oh, 
This is sounding awfully familiar. You guys remember Bonnie Rebecca? Same thing, except I don't think she was caught eating fish. She saw a naturopath as well, had horrible hormone levels, refused to listen to her doctor's advice, going to all different doctors, experimenting with variations on a vegan diet, until her health problems eventually got so severe that she listened to her doctor and started eating animal foods. What's also familiar is the format of this video. She's sitting there, pretty, all her makeup done up, playing the sympathy card. I feel like this is deja vu. Let's see how this pans out. All of my hormones were out of whack. Actually, they were premenopausal. What I've learned is that whenever there is disease in the body, it doesn't just happen from one day to the next. It's like a gradual thing. It's, it's a buildup of things that eventually you get something, you get a disease. This is not some unknown disease that manifests itself. It is a nutrient deficiency inherent to a plant-based diet. Great way to overcomplicate things and dance around a very simple concept that she refuses to acknowledge. So then I started to eat more fats and added some cooked food. And within two months, I got my period. It's very clear that the body cannot obtain caloric nutrition on a raw plant-based diet in adequate amounts. A cooked plant-based diet can make up for that caloric intake, but it will still starve your body of vitamins and minerals. A raw plant-based diet starves you of everything. And I was really happy, um, but it was very irregular. So I never knew when it was coming. Some months it came. Most months it did come and I would get my period for two to three days. So it was light and I just told myself, it's, it's just my body healing. It's gonna take time. It was years that I didn't have my period. So obviously my body needed time to heal. So I was patient with it. This was all of 2016. It doesn't take more than two to three months to fix nutrient deficiencies on a high quality animal foods based diet. All indigenous people, our ancestors, would consume foods for several months to ensure fertility to optimize their vitamin stores. This means consuming a considerable amount, more than 65% of your total calories from animal foods. And it was in 2017, in the middle towards kind of like September or something, when I stopped getting my period again. How many times can this girl lose her period and not correlate it to nature, telling her she is not obtaining enough nutrition? My hormones were still not good. I wasn't ovulating. I am still not ovulating. Uh, I was basically anemic and my thyroid levels were low. It wasn't really bad but it was borderline. So the doctors, they recommended that I take testosterone and that I take a thyroid pill. Ever since I started to go with them, they would always say, you need eggs. Just eat some eggs and you'll be fine. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna eat eggs. Like I can do it with the plant-based diet. I always knew that doctors would recommend that, but I didn't pay attention to it. I always knew that doctors would recommend that, but I didn't pay attention to it. What? To know something, you have to pay some attention to it. I think what she means to say is, I knew animal foods were the solution. I just didn't want to admit it. And my friend who's a nutritionist, she specializes in hormones. So I talked to both of them and told them what was going on and my symptoms. And they said, okay, what you need to do is get an iron supplement. So I started to take iron. Also, eat more protein, eat more fat, like really track how much protein you're getting. Uh, so I started to track my macros and around this time I was also talking to a friend who was giving me my workout plans and I was tracking my macros, trying to gain weight and gain muscle and I was super motivated. I was like, yes, this is gonna do it. I'm gonna get better. And I was also taking some Chinese herbs to help me regulate my period. This doesn't make sense because she said she was following a high fat, high protein cooked food diet, yet still lost her period. So what her friends are essentially telling her is the diet she's doing now is fine. She just needs to add an iron supplement and some Chinese herbs. 
I gained around six pounds and I got my period back. I've been doing everything right. I was taking the supplements, I was eating more protein and fat, I was taking my herbs and working out and tracking my macros and making sure I was eating enough protein and I was feeling better and I gained the weight and I got my period. So I was like, okay, this is really good. Uh, I started to see a new doctor. She was a naturopath. She understood my diet more than the other doctors, which I really liked. I felt safe with her and at that time i was feeling physically a little more tired i was beginning to feel more tired my energy levels were just not good they were decreasing which was kind of weird like i couldn't i would film a video and i would get feel really tired after that or even my workouts i just took a lot more effort for me to get up and actually do them. So I did notice that, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Man, spending all that sweet Instagram money on naturopaths and doctor's appointments. Jesus, what I would give to be in this haze of goddamn confusion all of these vegans seem to be in. Blissfully unaware of everything going on in their body related to diet. It was July of 2018 when two things happened to me. I got candida, vaginitis candida. So I got candida in my vagina. I did the candida diet. So I started on that. And basically the candida diet was a diet low in sugar, low in fruit. I completely eliminated kombucha from my diet. I didn't eat grains. I was basically just eating veggies and fats and tempeh. I was also taking some supplements and some herbs for that and that went away quickly. Around that time was when I was also starting to get some digestive issues. I told my doctor about these symptoms that I was having and we already knew that I didn't have candida. So she said, I think you have SIBO. During this time while I was, before I got, I did the SIBO breath test, I was trying out different things. Like I would try eating raw for a week and seeing how I felt. Combining high sugar with a high fat intake can cause dysbiosis, gut imbalance related issues, especially small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So switching between raw vegan and candida diet likely made her gut health even worse. By this whole time, I was starting to feel desperate for my health and to find a solution around the summertime. And that's when I started open up to the possibility of adding some animal product into my diet. When I received my SIBO test results, which was early this year, January 2019, I was relieved, to be honest, that I knew what I had. I knew that I had SIBO. So the SIBO restricted diet, the one that you have to follow for the first four to six weeks is a very restrictive diet. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I would not be able to survive on that diet if I was eating plant-based. First of all, it was difficult for me to eat that because I felt a lot of guilt and shame and even just the taste and the textures of it. I, I wasn't, it's not something that I really enjoyed or was into, but I was seeing it as medicine. I, in the past, I never ate eggs. Like I, I never liked eggs. That was the first three weeks. And then I, I found a doctor who she's a plant-based and is a gastroenterologist. So I went to see her and I wanted to see what she had to say about SIBO and what diet to follow and what protocol. And she suggested uh, to take the antibiotics and to follow a vegan diet. Uh, throughout this whole time, I haven't taken antibiotics because I want to heal the most natural way. I think it's funny how these vegans talk about natural ways, yet all the food they eat didn't exist 50 years ago and they take dozens of supplements. So she recommended that and she said, you can eat anything. The SIBO diet is what they, you know, it's, it's not true. You can follow a vegan diet, just don't eat fruit, no raw and that's it. So that's what I did. So for the next two weeks, I was like, okay, I can eat vegan. Like maybe it's all in my head. And, and so I eat, I, I started to eat hundred percent plant-based, which was a lot of fiber foods. Again, I wasn't eating any gluten. That's something that she recommended, but the, the symptoms came back 
even worse. It literally does not end. These people will take themselves to the grave with this plant-based bullshit. These high fiber foods, grains, legumes, even gluten-free destroy your gut. Lectins, phytates, oxalates, dozens of anti-nutrients will eventually cause gut-related issues. They are not preparing these foods properly like our indigenous ancestors did because they have no understanding of nutrition, let alone food. It got to a point where I thought that maybe it was stress, but it was, it was obvious that everything that I ate, whenever I ate it, I just felt sick. So I went back to the diet. I went back to the SIBO diet and it's been about a month now that I've been, or less than a month, it hasn't even been that long, that I've been following it to the T, or like very good. First week, I was feeling a little bit better. It was, it didn't even take that long. It only took like five days for me to actually feel better. Um, but two weeks ago was when I really, really, really started to feel a lot better. I'm feeling like myself again. I feel energy again. I feel good. I don't feel bloated. I wish and my hope is to be able to go back and eat the way that I love to eat. For so long, I saw this food, this animal food, as something that is basically toxic for my body, something that I don't need, that my body doesn't need. And to see it as something that it could heal me was really hard for me to, it still is hard for me to accept and admit or even consider this was really hard because of what I've believed for so long because of what I've preached for so long <laughs> because of the responsibility that I feel as someone who has a voice and who speaks I really want to be able to go back to eating plant-based I want to be able to just feel that good from eating plants and and be a testament to that. It's been really hard for me to accept and admit it. Why? There's a couple possibilities that I can hypothesize. She has some moral or ethical bias towards animals that she refuses to acknowledge in this video. She has a difficult time admitting she was wrong, but she did admit she was wrong on several fronts in this video, so I don't think that's it. She was making a shitload of money being vegan, very possible, or she is a paid vegan shill. I think it's a combination of all of the above. I feel like this is deja vu with the Bonnie Rebecca stuff. This is very, very weird. You have these young vegan women making a lot of money, have a lot of social media influence and following, and they both had the exact same story. And this isn't the first time we've seen people consume animal foods and still pretend to be vegan. Moon and Rock were eating vegan for months before they came clean. So we have a huge change in our life and it's not just a baby arriving, but we recently decided to start incorporating some animal products into our diet. And we debated a lot whether or not to even say this, so be gentle with us. But uh, it's yeah. been about, for me, about three months, uh, maybe two and a half. No, yeah, it's, it's been three, three now. Three months, yeah. Yeah. It's an unfortunate combination of things. The investment in the moral or ethical beliefs, the fear of backlash from the community, the sense of belonging that these people develop on this plant-based way of eating, whatever it may be. Guys, please support Ravana. Encourage her to step away as far as possible from this plant-based bullshit. Guys, Leave a comment below. Let me know which vegans you think aren't actually vegan. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Down below in the comments is my Amazon shop where you can find a bunch of nutrient-dense foods, salts, various things I incorporate into my lifestyle. There's also my Patreon, a great way to support me as well as get personalized one-on-one -on -one question support. I also have my Twitter down there, guys, my Instagram. I try to post every single day on my social medias. If you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving the overall nutrient density of your diet, uh, you can reach out to me via email, frankatufano at gmail.com, or contact me through the form on my website below, frank-tufano.com.